welcome to Sports from the Couch. I gotta say, it's the stupidest thing in sports. With your host, Mike Mercado. Players cannot stand them. Coaches cannot stand them. Most importantly, the fans can't stand them. Brought to you by Mercado Airways. I'm gonna say it once and hopefully I'm wrong, but it's a disaster waiting to happen. That is so bad, that is absolutely brutal. Hello and welcome into another edition of Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. I'm your host, Mike Mercado. I want to thank you so much for making us a part of your day. It is Saturday, October 31st, 2020. Happy Halloween, everybody. We are here in the beautiful city in Chicago, and we are going to break down the latest news of the new manager of the Chicago White Sox, Tony La Russa, our thoughts and our expectations of this move. But before we get to that, let's take care of some housekeeping notes. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike M Media. I'm on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. And the show's on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Like, rate, review, and share wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. You can become a producer of the show at Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. The home tour interviews with athletes and celebrities that you get ad-free and before anybody else. That's Patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have swag, guys, at Teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, YouTube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Play video games with us at Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves to be up to date with everything that we're doing on the network. Part of my job as general manager is try to explain those thoughts to the fans and to the media. Uh, but I don't want to belabor that too much today. Instead, I'll pivot to another one of my responsibilities at GM, and that is to welcome home. Uh, welcome back to an or- the organization. Hall of Famer, Tony La Russa, next manager to the Chicago White Sox. Tony, welcome. Thank you, Rick. Um, I am really excited to be here today. Uh, I know enough people are asking why. Uh, and I think there's two answers, at least two major answers. One is during the last bunch of years that I've been upstairs, whether it be for MLB or the D-backs, Angels, or Red Sox, uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to stay close to the game, watch the game from upstairs. It was very difficult, uh, increasingly so, to sit there and, and, and think about what's going on downstairs. Uh, you know, when you're an advisor, uh, it's something I enjoyed, but I always had this thought, man, it's more fun, down- I, it's more fun downstairs. I did get a fresh uh, uh, opinion, obser- observation point for how difficult front office work is. Uh, I got better feel for scouting and player development, all that thing, but my heart was always in the dugout. And to that, uh, when the first inquiry was made about the White Sox, uh, I perked up because being frustrated being upstairs, but more particularly, uh, I think all managers would understand this. I think everybody would understand this, how rare it is to get an opportunity to manage a team that's this talented and this close to winning. Uh, most of the time, your chances are, are the opposite. So the combination of looking forward to getting back down there and, and checking myself, you know, to have the energy and all that stuff, and the White Sox making the call uh, with a chance to win sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm excited that they, they made that choice and looking forward to uh, what's ahead. Okay, friends. So let's go ahead and we'll break it down this way. I have right here in front of me, I wrote down some bulletin points on things that I want to hit on and reasons to like this hire and reasons to dislike this hire of Tony La Russa to the Chicago White Sox. And if you're following me all over social media, you know how I felt about this original rumor when Nightingale came out with it, and then Bruce Levine confirmed it. And then everybody from White Sox fans to other pundits saying this has to be a joke, this has to be a red herring, this is a distraction, they're going to hire A.J. Hinch for sure. And the whirlwind happened, next thing we know, Tony La Russa is the only person really being considered for the manager of the Chicago White Sox. And literally a few hours after that, A.J. Hinch is hired by the Detroit Tigers in your own 
division. So some interesting things to note before we get into what we like, what we don't like. I'm I'm I don't like this hire, plain and simple. I'll be upfront about it. There's gonna be a lot of different reasons that people are gonna say they're not excited about this hire, why this hire really upset them, why they were caught off left field with this one. And then there's gonna be a lot of people who are all for it simply because of the name. And also because of the political climate, they are inclined to kind of make these very stern opinions about why they like somebody while they don't. And I'm trying to avoid that. You know, I know at the heat of the moment, I we all kind of react one way, but I really wanted to take a second to tell you why some of these, these, these reasons are going around in my brain. And we'll start off with things to like. And first of all, experience. Look it. I'm not going to exclude you from any type of job because you're 76 years old. Do I have my own beliefs about certain positions in politics and in life where maybe we don't want somebody who's closer to 90 than they are 60? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm one of those type of people. But with that in mind, I don't think age discrimination has any place in this world. So I'm not excluding him because he's 76 years old. The reasons I don't like his a his age being part of this is for another reason we'll get to that and the reasons i dislike him but the experience i mean the man is obviously one of the biggest winners of all time regardless of whether or not you like his political views you can't say that he's done anything else but win or that he's had winners and that he's helped organizations turn around so obviously with that alone and it, that also goes to in-game management. Obviously, one of the biggest flaws of Ricky Renteria is his management of the bullpen, the rotation, just the X's and O's. I could promise you this. Even at 76 years old, even if he slowed down just a little bit, there are not many managers in Major League Baseball that have seen as much baseball, have called as much baseball, have been in those situations where everything is on the line and came out on the other side a winner. So there's really nobody in Major League Baseball right now who I would say, yeah, can outmanage Tony La Russa. At least that would be the case back in 2011. I don't know about nine years later. But all of that, he's a winner. We've seen him win World Series. We've seen him manage Hall of Famers, MVPs. There is a greatness to him. It's undeniable. And I think that's the one thing that has blocked a lot of people from going all in one way or the other of completely hating it or completely loving it is that you can hold on to that fact that no matter what happens, they're not taking a chance on a young manager that's unproven that hasn't won. They're taking their chance on somebody who is completely proven. The problem lies in when and the time. I mean, right now in this climate, nine years later from his glory years, that in its own is enough to maybe you questioning this. But for the reasons I just stated, there are plenty of reasons to be excited if everything is in a blank canvas. But we know that's not how life is. And we'll start going into the things I dislike because there's many more of that. But before we, I, I, I have to acknowledge, yeah, there are, he's a winning manager. He's a Hall of Fame manager, one of the greatest of all time, one of the greatest minds of all time, especially for his era. Does that translate in 2020 to 2021? I don't know. But we talked about him knowing baseball. And then we hear on these interviews just this year talking about how he needs to come back to baseball to try to kind of change the way the game is played. Look, I've been honest here on Sports on the Couch. You've heard me talk about it with Paul Shivari. I believe that what's killed baseball is they have taken a lot of the fun out of the game. Base runners, you know, hits you know, steals, a bunch of, I get it. I, I, there is something that's been lost with the analytics, but you can't also deny that the analytics have helped organizations win baseball games, win championships. So if you were supposed to, I don't know, be a open-minded person and you were to take some of that gut feeling you have, but also the numbers that are unbiased, that are just there to give you the facts. I think that's something safe. I think it's okay to ease your way into it. Kind of like what Joe Madden did. And then we've seen it completely go the other way with like guys like David Ross, where it's all about the analytics. Very rarely is it about gut decisions. But when you do make a gut decision, this goes to the things to like, you really can't question Tony La Russa. Hey, he's seen it all when it comes to bullpens, a pitcher, if they're looking bad, if they're looking good, whether they have it or not. But also with that, is he going to be able to accept 
when somebody gives him information, somebody who obviously will never reach the levels that he has in this game and tells him, hey, no, this is how Dylan sees pitches in this situation. We got to let him write it out. The numbers say this. What's he going to do then? Because that is how Coop and Ricky got fired was because they weren't listening to that. So you're going to bring a guy who literally nobody in baseball except the owner because he's the owner of the team can ever really tell him otherwise? And then we have to mention it. His thoughts on players' rights. Now, he obviously said in the press conference, he's, his, his views have changed about it. He's changing his tone a little bit. He's talking about he believes that it's right that they're protesting their rights and, and equality and for, you know, for police to get re- to, to change the way that they policy and the way they police. And, you know, I, I get it. Totally understand that you have to give a human the opportunity to earn you to change your mind, to earn the fact that you change your opinion on them. But I'm going to take dude for what his original words were in that podcast. And he talked about that he hated them kneeling for the flag and that the Black Lives Matter movement and all, all the craziness. I'm not going to put words in his mouth. You can listen to it. But in, in that exchange, I'm going to take his word that that's what he was feeling. And if he's changed his mind, great. He's got time now to show us that. And you know how you're going to have to show us that? In that lineup you have. A cool lineup. A lineup a lot of people love. A lineup that is not afraid to talk about their opinions. Go away from from protesting, right? Go away from social movements. This team has swag. This team has a little bit of arrogance in the best of ways. You don't think Tony La Russa wants to get rid of that just a little bit? Kind of mess mess with that chemistry just a little bit? I mean, Ricky was kind of doing it. And I guess that's the thing is I don't want the baseball police in this lineup. I would love a leader to step up and show them the ways to get to the next level to when it's time to be serious, when it's time to crunch down. But I don't need anybody to change the way this team acts, the way this team is. And I think more than managing a game, which in baseball, it's not the same as a head coach in basketball or the NFL. In baseball, you're definitely more of a person manager. And is Tony La Russa going to be able to connect to this team? I'm not going to judge that he can or cannot just because he's an old white dude. I'm not. I'm questioning, though, can any 76-year-old really kind of connect with a bunch of 20-year-olds? I don't know. But more than anything that really upset me about this is Jerry Reinsdorf's involvement in this entire process. He completely cut the knees off of Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams. For what? To hire his friend. You know, when, when Rick Hahn was out here after they got rid of Ricky, and he talked about he wants somebody with recent World Series experience. You know, it, it goes back to when this Bulls team said young and athletic and brought in Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo. The interference of Jerry Reinsdorf is... Unmatch. This is the same guy who didn't want to interfere with the Bulls getting back together for another championship run, but will interfere to get Tony La Russa back in his team. Why? Because he wants to make something right from 1983? Like, what are we talking about here? Then you also have to ask the question. When there's a roster move to be made, when something has to happen, does Tony La Russa have to talk to Kenny Williams? Does he have to talk to Rick Hahn? He's got an inroad with the owner. We've seen that. This complicates everything. This is something Jerry Jones does. And for anybody who still doesn't quite understand why this is a big deal, it's one thing when an owner is making a move for the greater good or because, you know, it's what they're known for or that they're just a garbage organization that's going nowhere. This is a team that people are excited about. They had momentum. That had this cool factor to it in such a cool city. And instead of letting the guys who built this thing together, who had asked their fans for patience, who promised them this other side that was going to come, and to completely negate it simply by you deciding you wanted this guy in charge. And here's the truth. He owns the team. Nobody's going to tell him otherwise that he can't make that decision. It's not for you to decide, for me to decide. No matter how much we wanted A.J. Hinch or anybody, Sandy Alomar, it didn't matter. It was what Jerry wanted from the start. And as soon as Tony La Russa said that he had some interest coming back, we should have known. We should have known then because that's what Jerry does. He loves keeping things in the family. 
the the radical changes that are coming from the Bulls, that's why it was so monumental in the city because it doesn't happen with this ownership. So for the White Sox to do this to their fans, it might work out for them. Mo- the reason most likely it works out for them is because they have so much damn talent. But this was a typical White Sox little brother move. Instead of making the right smart decision that everybody was telling you to make, you went out the box, you tried getting a little cute, you stayed in the family, and you got somebody a little too late. Literally the story of this organization, let's get Ken Griffey Jr. a little too late. Let's get Adam Dunn just a little bit too late. It, It doesn't make any sense to me that you would go in this direction. And to tell me that maybe Jerry got a little, you know, woozy about bringing A.J. Hinch because of the whole cheating scandal. The only legitimate part of that is the players. I don't know if there's a lot of players on his team that care about A.J. Hinch in that way. Hell, Dallas Keiko played for the man. He'd probably be okay with it. But if you're telling me that, that cheating is a big deal, that that's not why you wanted A.J. here. Tony La Russa was the manager of the Bash Brothers, right? He was one of the main managers along with Joe Torre during the most rapid use of steroids in the sport. We've seen the man be in charge of cheating teams, whether or not it's from chest cans or if it's from injections. He's been involved in some crazy story in another. So don't give me this, that it has something to do with cheating. He's part of the biggest cheating scandal that we had at one given point. It can work out for for the White Sox. It can work out for Tony La Russa. They're good enough for it to work out. This was a move that completely deflated the energy of the Chicago White Sox. And it's because it was so unnecessary. He was on nobody's radar. No other team was out there looking to hire Tony La Russa. And yet here are the White Sox fighting against themselves, not interviewing anybody, looking bad, and letting a team in their own division getting a guy everybody thought that they should be targeting. It is what it is at this point. I, again, I'm opening the, the door to, yeah, it could work out, simply because of talent. But don't tell me that this was a good move. Don't tell me this was a smart move. It was a typical Jerry Reinsdorf move. And that's all you can say about it. Whether it works out or not, or irre- irrelevant at this point, doesn't matter. And it's a bummer because... What should have been an exciting day, new manager, new times, good feelings, good vibes. And it'll be, if nothing else, a melancholy type of day, right? Is that how you use that word? It was just, it was a rainy day during the summer. It was a bummer. And White Sox fans deserve better than that. But let me know your thoughts, guys. What did you think? Tony La Russa being named the new manager of your Chicago White Sox. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media, Instagram, Mike Mercado Media, and the show's on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. And that'll do it for us on this edition of Sports from the Couch here on Mercado Airwaves. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. You can follow me on Twitter at Mike M Media. I'm on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media, and the show's on Twitter at Couch Sports Talk. Like, rate, review, and shares wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves. You become a producer of the show at patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves, the home tour interviews with athletes and celebrities that you get ad free and before anybody else. That's patreon.com slash Mercado Airwaves. We have swag, guys, at teespring.com slash Mercado Airwaves. Like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Play video games with us at twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves. And, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves to be up to date with everything that we're doing on the network. Enjoy all the games. Enjoy your weekend. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Happy Halloween. We will see you next time here on Sports from the Couch on the Mercado Airwaves Network. I'm Mike Mercado.